see you in the house of the Lord this morning. And uh, as you get the Father today, and kind of, kind of a short notice, but we thank God for speaking to our hearts and giving us a, a word today. And uh, before we get started again, I'd just like to go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, again, we call upon your name this morning. God, realizing that in and of ourselves that we can do very little, Lord, we need thy heavenly anointing upon us to help us to minister your word today. And again, I ask that you will anoint the congregation to hear your word. God, we pray that you will encourage and strengthen your children. And Father, those that are uh, listening today by way of uh, internet, we pray, God, that you will touch each and every one. God, that you will allow healing virtue to flow in their lives. God, we'll just thank you and praise you for everything you do. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, I want to talk to you for a few moments on Jesus' encouraging word in a discouraging hour. See, I believe that we're living in discouraging times. According to statistics, over 48 million Americans have some type of anxiety disorder with about 108 million saying that since the coronavirus outbreak, they're finding it difficult dealing with depression, stress, and anxiety. People say they're having problems getting out of bed. They have little or no motivation, no energy, feeling irritable or very sad. Statistics as of yesterday, February the 20th, stated that 493,236 people have passed away due to COVID-19. Unemployment in January was like at 6.3%, and our national debt is pushing right at 20 $8 trillion. I don't know that we can comprehend that kind of figure. With a new stimulus plan that's coming soon, our debt for our nation will reach around $30 trillion. And our nation is weakening, and as it weakens, one wonders how much longer will it be, maybe before our currency is even worthless. Our country is greatly divided, divided in many, many different areas. And the Bible tells us that a house divided against itself cannot stand. Also, the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3, it tells us that in the last days, perilous times will come, times of great stress and trouble. Difficult days that will be hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self, narcissistic and self-focused. Lovers of money that is driven by greed. Boastful, arrogant, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. They will be unloving, devoid of human natural affection, callous and inhumane, malicious gossipers, devoid of self-control, immoral, brutal, haters of good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, holding a form of religion while denying the power of God. With all this going on around us and so much more, we're truly living in discouraging, depressing, and difficult days. But this morning, I want to tell you to take heart. Have courage, because Jesus has a word for us today for this discouraging hour. In John's Gospel, <clears throat> chapter 14, several verses of Scripture <clears throat> that I want to deal with this morning Verses 1 through 3, 16 through 18, 
and 27 through 26. So there's much more there, but time probably wouldn't permit to cover all these. But Jesus understood the days that were coming. And his word is settled in heaven forever. Even his followers, when Jesus spoke these words, were facing difficult and discouraging moments. But Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And I will pray the Father. He shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And then Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So first, Jesus in his encouraging words this morning, he gives us encouragement with a promise of a place in heaven and a personal escort to glory. <coughs> we see here he says, let not your heart be troubled. Jesus doesn't want your heart to be troubled. He doesn't want you to be stressed. He don't want you to be uh, full of anxiety. He said, you believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. It was about 40 days after Jesus' resurrection from the dead. He led his followers out to the Mount of Olives, there on the summit of the Mount of Olives. And Jesus <coughs> began to give them instructions. And the Word of God says, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. While they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by in white apparel, which said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into the heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go. And then Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, he said, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. When we read these scriptures this morning, <coughs> we're reminded Jesus is coming again. We have the word of Jesus. We have the word of angels there on the Mount of Olives. And we have the word of Paul, that Jesus is coming again. The Bible says that in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall a matter be established. Jesus said again, let not your heart be troubled. Paul wrote, he said, wherefore comfort one another with these words. The words that Jesus is coming again should bring encouragement and hope and comfort to each and every child of God. When we realize today that what we're facing in this life, and we see all around us today that uh, the signs that are around us point to that time when Jesus is going to rapture the church. You know, the Bible uh, tells us if we don't know the day, 
We don't know the hour when Jesus is coming, but the Bible tells us to be ready, to be watching, and to be waiting. Each and every day, we are to be looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we consider this morning all that's going on in this world, when we see the attitudes of this world, it makes us aware that the coming of the Lord is near. For the child of God, we don't need to be hanging our heads down low. We need to be lifting our heads up high. We don't need to be looking for a hole in the ground somewhere. We need to be looking for a hole in the sky because Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, is coming for his church. Can you say amen to that this morning? He has made a promise. And <clears throat> bear with me this morning. It's not COVID. I just got to drive through it. <laughs> now I want you to <clears throat> think you got COVID here this morning. But, uh, you know, Jesus has made this promise. I was thinking about a song. I don't know if I can do it or not, but... Uh, I was thinking about a song we used to sing. It simply said, Laying up my treasures in that home above, Trusting, fully trusting in my Savior's love, Doing what I can for heaven's holy dove. I'm getting ready to leave this world. Are you getting ready to leave this world this morning? He said, I'm getting ready to leave this world I'm getting ready for the gates of pearl keeping my record right watching both day and night I'm getting ready to leave this world I get excited when I think about that to prepare a mansion Jesus said I'll go if it were not true I would have told you so just a little while to linger here below. I'm getting ready to leave this world. I'm getting ready to leave this world. I'm getting ready for the gates of pearl. Keeping my record right. Watching both day and night. I'm getting ready to leave this world. Is that how you feel this morning? I'm getting ready to leave this world. And praise God, one day we're going to hear that trump of God sound, the shout, the voice of the archangel, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. We which are alive and remain are going to be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That should bring encouragement to each and every individual's heart. Amen? And the dead in Christ are going to rise first. James, why? Because they have six feet further to travel. <laughs> <laughs> because they got six feet further to travel. <laughs> so that's why the dead in Christ rise first. But we're going to be caught up together to meet them in the air. And what a wonderful and glorious time that's going to be. The Word of God teaches us <clears throat> that our temporary affliction are not worthy to be compared to the things God has prepared for us. In Romans 8, 18, Paul said, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. He wrote to the church at Corinth and said, That is why we never give up. That's why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can now see. Rather, we fix our gaze on things which cannot be seen. For well, the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. I want you to know 
the troubles and trials and all this that we're going through now, it's not going to last forever. But there is something that's going to last forever. And we're going to live on in God's tomorrow forever and ever and ever and ever. You know, we sing that song, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound Saved Rich Like Me. You know, and we sing for 10,000 years the songs that will continue praising, but it's going to be forever and ever and ever. Not just 10,000 years, we're just going to be started. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So we see here the things that we cannot see will last forever. Hebrews 11 chapter tells us that by faith Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Moses, when he left out of Egypt, he endured as seeing him who is invisible. How do you see anybody that's invisible? How can we see an invisible God? By faith. And it was by faith that he left Egypt. By faith he went. And the Bible tells us that we're to be looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So as we look unto him as we go through this life, we know that we have hope. Abraham, the Bible says in Hebrews, 12, in Hebrews chapter 11, that Abraham... Uh, journey and look for a city that had foundations whose builder and maker is God. And I want you to know this morning I'm looking for a city. I'm looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. John the Revelator saw that city. He saw that city built four square coming down out of God from heaven. A city 1,500 miles high, a city 1,500 miles wide, and a 50, 1,500 miles long. A city built four square. It had 12 foundations, gates of pearl, streets of gold, the glorious place. And Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And this place that Jesus went to prepare he prepared us a mansion in this city. We have a place in that glorious city that John the Revelator saw coming down. And we know that Jesus said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. This morning, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, you need to take heart. Because Jesus sees and knows what you're facing. And he says, it's just a little while. Just a little while. And it's going to pass. And there's something far better awaiting for you. Keep holding on. And in 2 Corinthians 4, 16, that's why he said, that's why we never give up. You can never give up. Keep pressing on. Secondly, Jesus encouraged his followers with the promise of another comforter. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I'll pray the Father, he'll give you another comforter that may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Jesus said, I'm going to pray the Father. He's going to send you another comforter. Jesus says, I've been here with you, but I'm going away. I've got to go away. But I'm not going to leave you without a comforter. I'm going to pray the Father. He's going to send you another comforter. Now, another comforter that he's talking about is not another of a different kind. It's another of the same kind. We know the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. And uh, in verse 17, Jesus calls the, the Holy Spirit the spirit of truth. And Jesus is truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. 
And so the Holy Spirit is known as the Spirit of truth. And Jesus is truth. In John 15, 26, but the comforter, when the comforters come, whom I will send you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he will testify of me. <clears throat> now, this promise of the comforter, the Holy Ghost, was fulfilled on the feast day of Pentecost. It wasn't long after Jesus' There's some days after Jesus' ascension back to heaven. He told the followers to go into Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. And it just so happened on the day of Pentecost. That's when that sound as a rushing mighty wind filled all the house where they were sitting. And the Holy Ghost fell upon them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Now. The Holy Spirit came to dwell in our lives. And it's the same Holy Spirit. Each and every one of us, when we have truly accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit takes us abode up within our life. And so Jesus encourages his followers with the promise of another comforter, the Holy Spirit. And he does so many things for us. He leads us. He, he, he guides us. He teaches us. He brings God's word to our remembrance. He, he, he convicts us of sin. And the Holy Spirit draws people to Jesus. He does so many wonderful things. And I looked up the word comforter in the Webster Dictionary. And it says, someone who helps you to feel less worried, upset, or frightened. Someone who comforts you. Now think about this this morning as we think about the Holy Spirit. He's someone to help you feel less worried, upset, or frightened. The Holy Spirit this morning is our comforter. He takes away the fear from my life. If, if I have God's Spirit living within me, then praise God, I know I'm a child of God. My Heavenly Father is going to take care of me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to fret. I don't have to be fearful. We don't have to be fearful of COVID. We don't have to be fearful of financial collapse. We don't have to be fearful of anything this morning because God says unto us, fear thou not. Fear it has torment. And God's not given us a spirit of fear but of love and power and of a sound mind. And he wants us to walk in that love. He wants us to walk in this peace that he has promised us. But someone who comforts you. I was thinking about my grandchildren and Danica from uh, the time she was this little thing. She had a, a, a blanket. She called it blanket. And uh, Danica still has that blanket. And uh, she still, at nighttime, she wants that blanket with her when she goes to bed. Thank God she don't take it to school with her. <laughs> but uh, uh, I remember one time they couldn't find it. It was around the Christmas parade time one year. And uh, I had to go, I went downtown, drove all over town looking for her blanket, looking along the sidewalks and streets and curb. Finally, Kimberly called me. We found it. It was in the back seat of the car. So, you know. Thank God Danica was happy. She had her comforter. And then, you know, I was thinking about uh, Eden. Uh, my little granddaughter, Jason's little girl, Eden. She's got a little owl. And, and she's got to have that owl when it comes bedtime. She, she wants that little owl because it, it brings her comfort. And uh, Judah... He's got a little, what you call a little tag blanket, just a little square thing, got little tags on it. But he's got to have that when he gets ready to go to bed because it brings him comfort. Preston, he's got a, a shirt he likes to sleep with. And uh, uh, my grandson, uh, Andrew, his uh, was his pacifier. I forget what he called it, TT, I think is what he called that. But you see, they have, the kids have a comfort, a comforter, something that will help them to sleep and help them to be 
at peace and not be worried. And as long as they got that, it brings them the comfort. And, uh, you know, I need that comforter too. I need that comforter to help me to sleep at night. I need that comforter to help settle my mind and uh, help me be at rest and not have to worry and not have to fret. And I've got a comforter and you've got a comforter. We all have this comforter that we depend on to help us. We just need to rely on him and know that he'll see us through. Can you say amen to that this morning? Amen. Amen. The last point. Jesus encourages us with the promise of peace. And to me, this, this is one of the greatest things for me. And God has helped me to be able to come to a point that I can walk in this peace. Is very seldom do I worry. Very seldom do I worry. Now, I won't say I don't ever worry or get concerned, maybe overly concerned, but for the most part, I do not because I've learned to trust in his peace and learn to trust in him. You know, Jesus said here in John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth give unto you. Let not your heart be troubled Neither let it be afraid. So he comes back again, just like he started. Let not your heart be troubled. And he says here, let not your heart be troubled. And then he goes on to say, neither let it be afraid. Fear not. Don't be afraid. The Prince of Peace says, I give you my peace. Now, the word peace, what does it mean? The word peace means a state of calm. It means freedom from worry, freedom from troubling thoughts or emotions, freedom from fear. That's what the word peace here means. Freedom from fear, freedom from worry, freedom from troubling thoughts or emotions. It's a state of calm. You said, how can you have a state of calm when your whole world is falling apart. Or when the doctor says, I've done all I can do. Or when somebody you love is facing this dreaded COVID or, or any of these things. You can trust in him. Your hope is in him. Your reliance is on him. And you can draw that peace from him. You know, in Romans chapter 5, it tells us, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then Paul, writing to Philippians, says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God that passes understanding will keep your heart and your mind. We, I need something to help keep my mind, uh, you know, so you don't lose your mind. This peace will help to keep you from losing your mind if we will rely on it. Now, when we have the peace with God, then truly we can experience the peace of God and all is obtained through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, let me ask you, you think is God or Jesus or the Holy Spirit ever worried, troubled, or fearful? Do you think anything's ever happened that God said, wow, I didn't know that? <laughs> no. God is in control. And if we're his children and he's given us everything we need, we have his salvation. He's provided for us his grace and mercy. He's given us his word. He's given us his Holy Spirit. We should be able to encourage ourselves in him. You know, David, there was a time King David was greatly distressed because the people were talking about killing him. And the Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. When he didn't have anybody else to encourage him, he encouraged himself. And sometimes, church, we need to talk to ourselves. It's okay. 
It's all right to talk to you, Seth. Somebody said, well, they're crazy. They're talking to the Seth. <laughs> no, I say a lot of times, Seth, you better straighten up. <laughs> Seth, you better get your mind on the Lord. Seth, you better, you better do this. You better do that. Talking to Seth all the time. Philippians tells us again, Paul wrote, <clears throat> be careful for nothing. But don't worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. You know, you become worried and fearful because of wrong thinking. The Bible says a whole lot to us about our mind and how we should keep our mind on Him. Those things that are good, pure, virtuous and all. If there's any virtue in them, let your mind be on these things. On these things. And, if, and if we are thinking on Him, one of my favorite verses in the Bible is in Isaiah 26, verses 3 and 4. It says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Trust in the Lord forever for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Again, listen, that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. If, if, if we keep our mind on him, if we are thinking about who God is and what he's done for us, if we're thinking about who God is and what he's going to do for us and how he keeps us day by day, how he's blessed us and helped us, if our mind's on him thinking that he's promised us a place in glory, his son Jesus is there preparing us a place, he's coming again, he's given me his Holy Spirit, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to fret. I don't have to fear because I'm a child of God. God is with me. And we get our minds set on Him. And we're thinking about the promises of God. And we're thinking of all the wonderful things that God is doing and has done for us and promised to do. Then that should bring peace into our spirit. That should bring calmness into our life. But then a lot of people, but what if? What if God doesn't do that? But what if God doesn't do that? What if God, you know, what if this happens? What if that happens? Well, what if it does? What more can you do about it? Except just deal with what you got to deal with. There's some things that we just have to deal with. But if we do it in faith in Jesus Christ and our hope is in the Lord, yeah, a lot of things we'd rather not have to go through. A lot of things we'd rather not have to deal with. We don't, we don't want the problems and troubles and trials. But I'll tell you one thing I found out in my life. I got to know God in a way I could have never known Him had I not gone through some things. When I went through some things and when I've gone through some things, I got to know him in a way I could have never known him had I not gone through it. Because he revealed himself to me in so many ways and assured me of his love and has brought me through. You know, that's just like he did for the children of Israel. In my right, he led them, led them across the Red Sea and they on the other side rejoicing. God's leading them. And the water get to Myra, and the water's bitter. And uh, they, they, they murmur and complain, and why you brought us back in the dive? We got no water to drink. And uh, told Moses to cut down a tree, throw it in the water. And God healed the bitter water and made it sweet where they could drink it. And then God revealed himself to them, and he said, I am the God that healeth thee. God, in that crisis for them, revealed himself to Israel is I am the God that healeth thee. And in so many things we go through in life, God reveals himself to us that he is a present help in time of trouble, that he is our stay, he is our encourager, that he is here to help us each and every day. Thank God for that peace. We sing that chorus, it says, 